The fire is in the stands. The flavor of the game. The atmosphere is delicious. At Bank of California Stadium, the experience is ever expansive and so are the culinary offerings. I'm Chef Maddie Land, and this is Tastemakers. Mark, welcome. Nice to meet you, how are you? I'm great, thanks for being here today. I hear you're gonna help me do a little bit of cooking. Yeah. So uh, maybe we should just get started here. Today what we're gonna make is uh, agnolotti, which is a stuffed pasta. Uh, we're gonna stuff it with a ricotta and rabbit filling. And then we're going to warm it up in a rabbit broth with a lot of Parmesan and some nice pistachios and herbs and whatnot. Sounds good, I've actually never had rabbit before. So never I'm had very, rabbit? No, never. Then fantastic. Earlier today, we, we took our rabbits, we broke them down, and we okay. took both legs, so the front and the rear legs, and what we want to do is we're going to braise them. Okay. So the first thing we do for that is we got a pan, we're going to get that nice and warm. If you don't mind, if you'll just give me a little seasoning, salt, pepper, you can turn them, flip them, get both sides. Uh, fairly aggressive, you know, fairly season aggressive? well. Yeah, okay. season them well. Oh, you can be more aggressive than that. Yeah? Yeah. Go for it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Flip those over, and we get a little salt and a little pepper on those as well. Perfect. Actually, I remember when I was in school and I was thinking about what pathway to kind of go down. I always knew I wanted to play soccer, but you know, a, a plan B. And I remember thinking about culinary arts because we took cooking class in grade, I want to say grade 11. And I just enjoyed it because we got to eat the food. Like I love eating. So I always thought like, okay, maybe culinary arts is going to be the way to go. But I knew that as long as soccer was doing well, I was never going to really step into that light. But I've always had an idea for wanting to cook. Well, I think this gives the opportunity to sort of have the best of both worlds. Yeah. Cooking is a big thing, obviously, for, for, for athletes. Nutrition is a big thing in general, so I think that I, I realized at a time when I was in college that I needed to take it more seriously. It's like, okay, maybe each week I'll come up with a different recipe online and then try and do it. Well, then maybe you should be showing me what you guys are doing. <laughs> nah, that's okay. You're the boss. No, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> So here we're at the point, we've got a nice little sear on our rabbit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up actually braising this. And okay. you know, I think this is about the appropriate time. We're gonna need to add a couple of these Coppola wines here. So if you don't mind, open up two of those. Okay. I think we'll take those two. Okay. And then I'll open up one more for the pot. <laughs> these I'm gonna add in as we're, and these are the aromatics that are gonna be part of that braise. And if you don't mind, we can grab two sprigs of the rosemary and a little bit of that thyme there and just, just crack it in half and throw it in the pot. So, just, so this is one, right? Yeah, that's one. Just, just break it, throw it right in. All right. And then one more. Yeah. And there you go. And then you said... Some of the thyme as well. You can time? just grab a handful, it just goes right in. Okay. Yeah, right, like right in the pot like yeah. that. So now that we did that, we're going to add uh, a little bit of this Pinot Gris. Okay. Uh, this is from Coppola. Uh, and we like this with the, the rabbit because it's, it's a little bit lighter. Down in the pot. That'll deglaze. And then we're also going to add some of our, our rabbit stock. So we made this from the carcass of the bones that we had earlier, right? And if you don't mind, there's a parchment paper sticking out of that pot there, right there. We're going to use that. That's just a little cartouche, which is the lid that's going to cover, oh, cover okay. this. And then we'll leave this on the pot like this. And this is going to braise eh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours till it's really, really nice and tender, falling off the bone, and we're going to pull that meat off the bone. Well, I think we should cheers and, and to a good meal. All right. Never made pasta in my life, other than boiling it. It's funny how people will say like, yeah, I made pasta last night, but like, did you really make it or did you just buy it and put it in the, <laughs> in the boiling water? So it's a different saying. saying. Yeah, we, we, we've definitely stepped this up a little bit, yeah. right? It just takes a little bit of attention. And again, let's bring this back. It takes practice and, and the practice of doing it over and over and the repetition is, is something that eventually you get to the point where you can just do it on a Saturday night or 
Thursday night, whatever. So here we have, it's just a fresh egg pasta. And what we've done is we've taken our braised rabbit meat and we've mixed it with a whole milk ricotta, a little bit of salt, pepper, and there's a little bit of lemon zest in here. Okay. Right? And if you don't mind, I'll start one, but I'll have you do this too, okay. right? We're gonna just take a little bit. We're gonna create these little, little, little dollops right here, just like that. And if you don't mind, we'll go down the thing and then we'll take okay. it and we'll fold it okay, over. Okay, awesome. Right? So to be able to do this, obviously you had to practice a decent amount of times to get a lot of your recipes. Where and when did you start really practicing for becoming a chef? When I was younger, I got myself into some, some pretty good restaurants um, and I had the good fortune of working with some great chefs. And each time you get into a restaurant, it's sort of like a new experience. And uh, some chefs have some very specific ideas of how they want to see things. And then, you know, the repetition, I mean, that's really, cooking is all about repetition. You know, you want to learn how to do the same thing over and over. And I, I imagine that's very similar for Yeah, you. yeah, exactly. That's why I'm, I'm interested in it because like you said, like practice is big for us. Everything is repetition. Muscle memory, it's all, you're doing the same thing over and over again, trying to get better each time. So for cooking. It's the exact same thing, right? And, and you know, the idea is on a, in a busy restaurant on a Saturday night, we might sell four to 500 of these. So you certainly get your opportunities to do them over and over. And at the end of the day, you know, the, you usually have your chef over your shoulder, yeah. uh, making sure that each one's exactly right and exactly perfect. So now we have this, we're gonna take this, we've got a little bit of water and we're gonna just kind of use this. And that will help seal, okay. seal the pasta. The thing about annulotti is, it's it's like a ravioli, but when you roll it, you get this little pocket. Okay. And that pocket is great because it catches all the broth. And so when you eat it, you get not only the ravioli itself, but you get a little, a little bit of broth with it as well. So the first thing we do is come over the top like this. And we'll separate them. Now, if you don't mind, we've got our little cutter right there. Yep. We're gonna take it and you're gonna cut right along the front of this line, just like that. And we're gonna cut that, that loop off, yep. All right, now that we have that here, add a little bit more water. And we're gonna fold it over. I wanna finish it off like that. And we take it right down. And we have it. So we're gonna go, we're gonna add a little bit of salt to our boiling water here. Uh, always wanna make sure our pasta is seasoned. Okay. Salt down like that. So our annual in there. Drop those in as well. Let these drain off a little bit here. And we're gonna set them aside for a second while we get our brodo, which is our stock okay. that we've cooked down with some Parmesan and some more herbs as well. And we're gonna warm that up. So next couple steps that we're gonna get into is we're actually gonna get into the plating. So we've got our pasta, we've got our pasta cooked. Um, earlier today, I braised some fennel. This is fennel, little baby fennel, which were in the bottom of these. We cut them in half and we put them in a pan and we cooked them down similar to the way we braised the rabbit in the same little stock. And we're gonna add that into the dish as well. And then we're gonna finish off with a, a little bit of, uh, actually a lot of parm and some grated pistachios and some of our fresh herbs. Awesome, awesome. So I, I can't imagine what it's like to get out in that field yeah. I mean, I see it from the outside, but in the middle of that field, it's got to be a whole nother experience. Oh, yeah, it is. When I heard that I was coming to the club, I was excited. And then when I realized what the stadium was going to look like, what our support was going to look like, I knew that it was going to be like an experience that might overwhelm me at the beginning. And I even think the, the home opener, when everyone was there, it was so loud. Like, I'm not going to lie, like, I was nervous. I was like, you know, we played on the road for four to five weeks and then it's like, now you finally have to come home and you got to play well in front of all these people. And I was like, okay, I don't want to let them down, you know, so. It was amazing and it, it's funny that like, I look back to that first game, but every game has that same atmosphere, right? They bring it all the time. 
like that. You know, I'm very grateful to be here and what the club has been able to create is amazing, right? And I think that anyone who enjoys soccer in North America needs to come to this stadium. Yeah. Not just for the, for the soccer, but just the atmosphere, you know what I mean? What you get for coming here. Yeah, you get to come watch us play, but you also get an experience that's like none other in the league, right? The stadium is world class. We have our pasta, and now what we've taken is some of that braising liquid okay. that we braised our, our yeah. rabbit in earlier, and we reduced it to, to a nice broth. Okay. We're gonna add in uh, our caramelized fennel, okay. and warm that through. And if you don't mind, I'll have you grab some of these. Okay. And if you could, we're just going to chop across the top, just straight okay. down. Okay. Um, doesn't need to be uh, tight or clean, just nice little chunks. Yep, exactly like that. And we're going to use that to finish, because okay. that's going to bring that, like I said, that, that herbaceous freshness. Yeah. And that, that's it? Yeah, just that's like perfect. That? Right. That's perfect. We can toss those back. Our pasta goes in. Okay. Right there. Coating it with the broth, making sure every bit gets nice and glazed over. And if you don't mind, we can just toss a nice handful of that in. All of it or? Uh, let's go about half of it. Huh? Yeah. The last and final step, obviously, is we want to plate this up and yeah. then we're going to enjoy that. Okay. A little bit of this caramelized fennel down at the bottom as a base. A little bit of sauce around it. I'm gonna grate a little bit of toasted pistachio okay. over it because we like just like that flavor with it. Okay. Just like a nice nutty finish with mm -hmm. it. And it pairs well with the Parmesan. So this, and you can tell me when's good for you, okay. but, but we just like it nice and coat all over the top. Yeah, that's good. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And that there is our rabbit and agnolotti with caramelized fennel. Next we get to enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> that looks very good. If you guys were actually watching me in my kitchen, you'd be like, oh, I have no clue. I'm just kind of like just throwing stuff in, well, like hoping at the end of it, it tastes good. You know what I mean? I'm like, I think that's a great way to go. And, and I think that's also a great entryway into cooking. Like it doesn't have to be serious. And what I, what I really appreciate is that, you, that interest and that drive to, yeah. to know more about it and to do it and not to be so afraid of it. I think that's really important.